Okay, guys, welcome to today's listening, distance learning day assignment. Uh, today we're talking about the immune system as we continue our examination of the human body. Just feel free to go through this at your own pace. I'd recommend maybe jotting down a few notes here and there, uh, or you can also go ahead and uh, access the printed version of this, which I have available on Edmodo and on the website. All right, here we go. Okay, so the first thing we're talking about is the initial defenses that your body has. Your body has several lines of defense. Mostly your body wants to just keep everything out entirely. So one of the first lines of defense we have is your skin, and it really is important. When you're talking about things like amphibians, their skin is very porous. It absorbs uh, gases like oxygen. They can breathe through their skin. It absorbs water. It also loses things, and other things can pass in. If you're absorbing th things, other things can pass also, like viruses and bacteria. Uh, so your skin is very de designed much more differently uh, it has multiple layers. It's very difficult for things to get through your skin, actually. You have specific chemicals in your oils that are in your skin and in your sweat that actually are going to go ahead and kill pathogens. A uh, pathogen is any organism that causes a disease, so bacteria, a fungus. A lot of times we include viruses in there also, even though they're technically not organisms. Uh, and it pretty much is just preventing the entry of pathogens. So I kind of have the picture of the Great Wall of China here. It's, it's preventing the... Def uh, uh, preventing the invaders from getting in in the first place. That brings us to our second line of defense, which is your breathing passages. Obviously, your skin doesn't cover everything. Uh, so you have your nose, your mouth, your ears even, really, and your eyes are all places where viruses and bacteria can get inside and can cause problems. Uh, luckily, inside there, You've got mucus and cilia in your nose, in your sinus cavities, in your throat, believe it or not, also, that are designed to filter out and trap and remove those pathogens. Next up is your mouth and your stomach. Let's say you eat something. You've got something that's getting through those defenses. One, your saliva actually does kill quite a few uh, pathogens all by itself. And really, with the exception of the bacterial pathogens, the ones that are designed specifically to get inside your gastrointestinal system, all the rest of those are not going to be able to withstand your stomach acid. Okay, They're going to get in there, your stomach acid is going to destroy those right away. So those outside barriers that you have, your skin, your breathing passages, the cilia, the mucus, your saliva, your stomach acid, are all designed to keep things out. But what if something gets in? What if you get a cut, you get an injury of some kind? What happens next? That is where the inflammatory response comes in. The inflammatory response is what happens when you have your outer defenses breached. Once something is in, your body rushes into action. This is part of your immune system. So one of the big things that happens is your blood vessels widen. You get a couple of signals to your body. They open up. More blood comes. By more blood, you're also going to be getting more white blood cells, which are called phagocytes. Okay, phagocytes are a very specific, large type of white blood cell. Uh, and what phagocytes essentially do is absorb other cells. Uh, in the image here, you've got the bacteria, phagocytes moving in. They're going to essentially absorb those bacteria. We'll talk about what the little green guys attaching to them are later. That's a whole other step. Um, but the phagocytes, essentially the word phagocyte, means to eat a cell. It means cell eater. And that's what phagocytes do. So the inflammatory response is just bringing more and more white blood cells to try and deal with whatever the problem is. And this is why whenever you get a cut or an injury, it tends to swell. Uh, it's swelling because blood is rushing to that area trying to heal the breach. The immune response is a very specific thing, and it's very complicated, uh, and it is where your immune system really, really shines. Uh, you have multiple different cells in addition to the, white, to the phagocytes, to that type of white blood cell that's going to come in and can actually tell the difference between different kinds of pathogens. Uh, if they've seen it before, they'll recognize, oh, this is a flu virus, this is a cold virus, this is a type of bacteria that we've seen and fought off before. Uh, and then your immune system can go ahead and target a specific attack that's going to attack that pathogen. Uh, so it's knowing what targeted attack is that pathogen uh, vulnerable to, where is its weaknesses. Um, so let's talk about some of the uh, frontline soldiers involved in that attack. But what happens when the outer defenses are breached? What happens when the 
inflammatory response is not enough. Uh, if the phagocytes are not able to go ahead and absorb it on their own, then we're going to need the next level of defense, which is the immune response. Okay, one of the soldiers is going to be what are called the lymphocytes. The phagocytes are a type of white blood cell. The lymphocytes are another type of white blood cell. You have two major kinds of lymphocytes, your T cells and your B cells, and they do different jobs. Uh, your T cells are what identify. Your T cells go in, figure out, okay, what are we looking at? What is this? What kind of pathogen is it? And they do that by looking at what are called the antigens. And antigens are on all viruses, all bacteria, all things. They're basically just on the outside parts of the cells or on the outside parts of the viruses. And those antigens stand out to the T cells. They can recognize them, they can see, and they can tell the difference. At that point, the T cells will signal the B cells, and the B cells are essentially your snipers. The B cells come in, they produce antibodies, the antibodies attach, and allow those pathogens to be destroyed. So let's take a little closer look at this. Okay, so in step one here on the immune system, we have the T cell recognizing a virus. You can see the antigens on the outside of the virus. The T cell has seen this virus before. It specifically knows what this virus is. It makes more of itself. The T cell is going to do one of two things then. Certain T cells become what we call killer T cells, which is just fun to say, so I'm going to say it again, killer T cells. And the killer T cells will actually start attacking your own cells. And remember what we've learned about how viruses attack. Viruses go into cells, they take them over, they reproduce until those cells are destroyed, and you suddenly have tons of more viruses inside your body. In that case, Having your killer T cells attack your infected cells is really a win-win situation because those cells are going to die anyway. And by attacking them, your T cells can destroy them before they've had a chance to make more viruses and infect your body further. So the, T the killer T cells take care of that. The other T cells go ahead and signal the B cells. Let's talk about what the B cells do once they get there. Once the B cells are there, they're going to go ahead and produce those antibodies. And your body contains antibodies for almost everything that you've ever been infected with that you've managed to fight off. So every flu virus you've fought off, every cold virus, uh, if you've ever had a bacterial infection that you fought off without antibiotics, you have antibodies for that. If you've had a vaccine, that's part of what vaccines do is train your body and teach your body how to make antibodies. So you have all of those. The B cells produce those antibodies. The antibodies then link and hold on to the viruses and basically clump them together uh, in this large, easy-to-see format, at which point your phagocytes actually come back in. Those big white blood cells come back in and are then able to absorb the bacteria or the viruses or the fungal parasites, whatever it may be, that they didn't recognize before. So again, T cells come in, they recognize the virus, they start killing your own cells that are infected. Uh, they start signaling the B cells. The B cells produce the antibodies, which allow the phagocytes to come in and attack. Uh, so that's pretty much your immune system right there. You've got outer defenses, the inflammatory response, and the immune response. So thank you guys for listening. Feel free to watch this again if you want, and go on to the next step in your distance learning day assignment. Have a great day, guys.